Welcome back guys. Instead of working on all the projects that I should be, like this motorcycle right here, I do have an update coming very soon on that, but this is a rainy afternoon and I thought what better way to spend it than to build a new keyboard. I've had these parts for quite a while now, I just haven't had the time to assemble it and I've been wanting to type on a new keyboard, so what better time than right now. I got most of these parts second hand, which is why I laid out all the keycaps to actually make sure I had enough to fill and populate an entire keyboard. Here is the main part of this build, which is a CNC machine full aluminum case, which is very premium and it is very heavy and it is awesome. The case alone weighs about five pounds without a keyboard inside of it, so it is very hefty in the hands. It just feels very nice. As you can see, the intricate cuts from the CNC on this top panel, but the outside is all bead blasted. It is a very smooth finish. Unfortunately, it only accepts the older micro USB ports. I could retrofit the new type C in there, but I'm just going to go with it because it'll work and I'm not going to be moving this keyboard all that much. So I'm not worried about it. I did have to find my own screws and they were obviously way too long. I also messed up in the top right there. You can see where I got a screw stuck and that's fine. I'm just going to leave it because two screws is going to be more than adequate to hold this in. It's already a very fragile port, so I'm going to be extra easy on it. The other thing it doesn't come with is insulation. Usually there's like a clear plastic plate that protects your PCB from shorting out and stuff like that. I'm just making my own very cheap DIY version, which is just a bunch of packing tape. Of course it looks hideous, but it's going to be on the inside of the keyboard and I'm never going to see it, so I don't really care. After about a minute with my Dremel, I was able to cut down those screws that I found everything is flush and it's actually a pretty strong connection. I don't think I actually even need three screws. Just got to cut out the window for the little firmware dip switches and then we can move on to installing all of the mechanical switches. These are the Ajaz diced fruit banana style and I like them because not only are they very cheap, they feel good and they sound good and I think they look cool. These come pre lubed from the factory so they're very smooth. They're tactile bump so they don't make a lot of noise but you can still feel when you hit that actuation point which I really appreciate. The PCB and plate is the WASD V3. This is one of their newer versions which is programmable and it also has hot swap sockets. I actually prefer soldered switches over these sockets because I like reliability over convenience even though these are for the most part pretty reliable. There's nothing more reliable than a soldered connection. I could have utilized the type C port as you see here although I'm just going to remove it because it is socketed and I can just plug in the micro port which actually already fits this case. If I'm really dying to have the type C port back I can just drill and tap into the case or I could just epoxy it in place. There's tons of ways that I could solve this problem but the micro port will work just fine for me. Now before installing the switches I am going to lubricate the stabilizers. If you don't do this your stabs are going to be rattling and squeaking and making a ton of ruckus that you don't want while you're typing. Normally I would be using a syringe as it is a lot faster and easier to apply but I don't have one at the moment so I'm just going to go the caveman route which is put some grease on a stick and shove it in there. This particular grease is made by Superlube and it has PTFE. You don't need any kind of fancy grease as long as it is somewhat viscous and safe for plastics it's going to be just fine. Just get it on all the mating surfaces as well as the metal bar and you should be golden. Next we can move on to actually installing the switches because they're hot swap sockets it's very easy you just line up the pins and then press down. Although you do have to be a bit careful because it is pretty easy to fold the pins over and then they're not going to work when you go and try and test your keyboard. So just make sure you're aligning things before pressing down. And because this is going to take me a bit of time, let's go with turbo mode and install all these switches.
I don't know if you guys have seen my last crazy keyboard build, but this one has dual batteries. It's wireless. I designed the entire case from scratch and it has a lot of stuff. So I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in checking that out. With all the switches in, we can just connect up the USB port and then start throwing on the top of the metal case. This thing is starting to look and feel very substantial. There is absolutely zero flex with the casing. Everything feels very tight. I am really liking how this is coming out. Next up, we just got to throw on the keycaps here and I will turbo mode this as well because it's going to take me a little while. Although I do want to tell you about these keycaps. They are PBT and front printed, although they're not double shot, which is totally fine with me. They are very thick though and they feel very nice they're kind of a cheap set and older but i was able to find enough of them to cover an entire 104 key keyboard i'm to the point where i can pretty much type without any legends on my keyboard so these legends are more just for looks and you can tell how old this set is because that's a windows 7 logo not windows 8 or 10 or 11 but 7 and i did run into one issue with the space bar sticking down so i had to investigate what i needed to do to fix that and it's usually one of maybe three things so the first thing i did was just chop off this additional stem which i thought might be rubbing on the case housing but i wasn't quite sure so let me just hack this off and then we'll try it again there it is gone and it should not be binding on that at least but it could be something else and and yeah, as you can see, it's still being stuck down. So the actual culprit is these thick uh, space bars are just a little bit too thick and they start binding on the switch housing. So if you take a couple, maybe like 0.3 of a millimeter off on either side, it should work just fine. And as I confirmed right here, everything is going well. And aside from just a couple of mods with the Dremel and also some sandpaper to make everything work smoothly, this build went off without a hitch and there wasn't really any issues with it. So I think it looks very good. As you can see, it is a stark contrast to my last keyboard build, which is completely over the top and crazy. This is very subdued and minimal. I really like the way the raw aluminum looks, especially against the dark gray keycaps. To me, it just gives you this ultra industrial solid feel and it just looks really cool to me and i'm sure you guys are curious as to how it sounds so here is a small typing demo It's been pretty much raining all weekend, although I did get more progress on three of the other projects I'm working on simultaneously, so there will be updates on those very soon. I'm glad I took the time because this will be my new daily driver and it will be very nice to type on. Hopefully you guys enjoyed coming along with me on this build and thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.